What is good, Vibe Gang? It is your boy, Ray Hill, with another one. Shout out to Miss Nancy for the dono. She uh, wanted me to go do Diddy, Fall Guy, Shane, Shine, if you guys didn't know. Swing. That's who Shine is. Shine, like the title says, Shine was the, the 10, about 10, about, was it 15? 10, sound like that. Because Diddy, it was a, it was a shootout and went in a club in New York. And you already know what happened. <laughs> Diddy went, <laughs> disappeared. He's a good genie. He was a good genie back then. He had skills, man. He was a ninja. That man disappeared from the face of the earth. Shine was like, Diddy who? What? What happened? Where we at? He was just next to me. But you see how karma's working out for him. Like, comment, subscribe, doing all of that. Now it says Sean exclusive interview. Stephen A. Smith is going to do is going to do the interview with him. Uh, Donald Trump appointed who to his cabinet? Question mark. So I thought I, I I honestly thought he got he went to jail. He came back and I heard a couple of his tracks that he did when he came back, and then he kind of just like went somewhere else. So I. I don't know what's going on with him now. Like, comment, subscribe, do all that. Federico, what the hell are you doing here? Since you already here, stupid face, you can leave. Stephen A. My brother. My brother, just go bald. Stephen A. Like that. I know you love football and sports. And I don't know you love all that. You love it. Your forehead shouldn't be the size of a football field or a basketball court. They could play a two-on-two -two in your forehead, brother. That's, it's illegal. You can't. And you shiny as shit. That light's hitting you, man. He owns shine. He owns a patent on shine. Every time you see some shiny shit, he gets 10% of that, motherfucker. Like, comment, subscribe, do all that. <laughs> Stephen A., it is on you. Back to the Stephen A. Smith Show. My next guest was a rising hip-hop star in the late 90s with a distinctive style signed to Bad Boy Records. Right. His career was cut short when he was convicted in the 1999 high-profile shooting at Club New York with Sean Puffy Combs. After serving almost nine years... I was literally three blocks away from there when that shit happened, too. I was three blocks, so I was doing... I mean, don't ask me what the fuck I was doing over there. I was handling business, in a way. But I was definitely there. I was, dude, as soon as I heard, I jumped on the train. I booked it back. I'm not dealing with none of it. Boy Records. His career was cut short when he was convicted in the 1999 high-profile shooting at Club New York with Sean Puffy Combs. After serving almost nine years in prison, nine he's years back with a compelling Hulu documentary called The Honorable Shine. Really? Which details his compelling oh, journey. Oh, shit. Uh, Hulu, I got Hulu. I got Hulu, and I just paid it today. Nah, my shit recapped. Uh, I can watch it now. I'm. What's it called? Documentary called The Honorable Shine, which details Honorable his compelling Shine. journey from prison to politics. Honorable Ladies Shine. and gentlemen, please welcome to the Stephen A. Smith Show, Moses Shine Barrow. What's going on, big time? How are you, man? How's everything? I'm fine. I try to bring some of that warm weather with me from believes uh, to the my brother why you look plastic my man look like a, one of the um elon musk robots with skin why he shit look like his his proportion is man uncomfortable shine what happened shine <laughs> shine used to wear do rags and shit and fitted caps like what my man looking all dapper okay okay looking like a shiny like a shiny nickel He's not even black. He's bronze. Hey. I'm fine. I try to bring some of that warm weather. Penny, a shiny penny. A nickel is not made out of bronze. I don't think a penny's made out of bronze. The fuck's a penny made out of? <laughs> Belize uh, to the uh, Disney Studios here in New York, but it's, it's not really working out. Other than that, I'm managing. I remember my days in Brooklyn where I was prepared for this uh, rigid weather, but I'm happy to be here. With a, with a legend such as yourself. 
I was getting ready to say, stop lying to the American public. You know you had no chance in hell of bringing that warm weather to New York City. Ain't never been here. You know it ain't coming to Never. Brooklyn. You know it ain't. Never. It, it, not the weather in New York, especially this time of year. You know that ain't coming, right? Hell no. I, I, I tried, man. Listen, last week, the weather was incredible. The weather was incredible. Yeah, it was like in the 60s. I, I feel you. I feel you. Look, man, let me get right into it with you. First of all, I'm proud of you. You're, you're, not only are you a politician, you look like a politician. Did you ever in your wildest dreams believe you'd be sitting here today? So he he's going to Donald Trump appointed him for what? Oh, every time he's in the podium, he needs to say, skip it. I think that will bring people together. I think that will unite people. The minute he says that, you're going to start smelling barbecues and blunts. A hundred percent. It's going to happen, bro. Let's go. Did you ever in your wildest dreams believe you'd be sitting here today as a politician talking to me and anybody else for that matter? Well, you know, I'd like to be specific. I'm the opposition leader of the Belize House of Representatives. Okay. So I'm not just a a okay. politician elected representatives i'm the uh, opposition leader in the house of representatives which puts me in line to be the next prime minister of belize uh -huh. uh, and you know wow. for me you, me i always knew that i was going to make an impact because i wanted to make an impact i wanted to uh, affect lives i wanted to, to lead people in the right way even as a young kid on the street uh, with a gun in my waist, defending right. myself, yeah, yeah, and yeah, defending yeah. my community. Talk that. Um, everything that I was doing was geared towards a collective betterment. And if you listen to that first Shine album, the very first words that I uttered in the intro is, Dear America, I'm only what you made me. That's a fact. That's you know a fact. I mean? That's a fact. That's a fact. That's a fact. Black and mm. crazy. Please save me. So that shows you where my mindset was at. Speaking in those socio-conscious uh, terms, uh, pleading to the system to provide an alternative to the systematic oppression that you know I, as a youth and many other urban youth, were facing at the time, and saying, "Listen, if you would build schools instead of prison, I'll stop living the way I'm living." That's what I was saying That's at a 18 fact. years old. So, to fast forward to 46-year-old Shine, who I've been politically active for the last 10 years. I have an opportunity to be the system. And that doesn't always happen. You know, Jay-Z helped Obama become president. Uh, you know, Beyonce tried to help uh, the vice president, uh, you know, to Kamala make Harris. a big jump. But it doesn't always work out. You don't always have someone who fact. can go from the, the spectrum of entertainment. Uh, but that's, that's the thing about it. That's the thing about it. Like, it didn't work because the woke mind is not is deteriorating. So that's why it didn't work because they were like, oh, now they plainly could see that you're trying to buy our vote now by bringing our favorite artists on stage. So like, and let's say if I was like a one of these radical stands, if I would have seen M on there, I would have, even if I felt Trump was the right choice, but since Eminem was there, boom, I'm voting for the Kamala because Eminem uh, endorsed her. That's what I would have done if I was one of these radical stands, because that's I call it radical, because if you're going to judge your vote by who they present to you, that then I, I'm looking from a president. I'm, I'm looking from a president that is matching my expectations of policy. You feel me? If I feel like your policies are going to affect me directly in a positive way that's who i'm voting for the problem with kamala that i was having was that kamala wasn't talking policy she was talking shit about trump the whole time she didn't say anything that she was going to do for me trump was letting us know exactly what he's going to do for me he's not even in office and shit's changing so so and it's not only that, it's already knowing what he's done before. That's the big selling point is he already fixed it once. And nobody could deny the numbers. Nobody could deny the facts. He's already fixed it once. 
if I see somebody that is telling me, hey, remember what happened before? I got you. I'm going to do it again. And then I have somebody else saying, yeah, but <laughs> and my nan, I'm going to go with the guy that did it once already. Not somebody that, that, that has for the last three and a half years has thrown it down in the drain, especially with the border, because that was her job. Her job as vice president was appointed to her by the president, Biden. Your job is to make sure that border is secure. She did not do that job. There's video evidence of people coming into this country illegally. There's video evidence of this. More than they were doing it before. Not that they were, What people are not understanding is they think they were saying when Trump was here, there was no immigration. There was no, there was no migrants. There was there, there, none. There was, but at the way the numbers jumped from when when Trump was president was is ridiculous. That's a lot of people. I went to New York a couple of months ago. I I, I was in the city. I was in Brooklyn. I was in the Bronx. They're there. I see them. I cross the street. It shit's real. I saw it with my own eyes. So you can't tell me, oh, no, that's not real. That's not happening. Yeah, the fuck it is. And it wasn't happening when he was in office. It wasn't happening when fucking uh, 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 Obama was in office, for God's sakes. At those numbers? No, there weren't. This is the highest rate right now. Do your due diligence and start listening to the other side. Why is it that there's a lot of debates of Republicans defending Republicans and debating for Republicans? But you don't see a lot of Democrats doing the same shit. Where are they? Where are, why aren't they going to colleges and talking to people? Why aren't they trying to push, hey, this is why you guys should vote for us and come with facts? Because they can't. They're not going about to stand in front of a camera and do this shit and make themselves look stupid. Don Lemon is already doing that for himself. So don't don't come over here. Bring me facts and then we could talk. Facts was, I'm, and I'm going to tell you, I don't know the specific number because I'm not Charlie Kirk and I'm not Candace Owens and I'm not uh, Ben Shapiro. I'm not none of them. But I'm going to tell you in the most plainest way that I could say it. When I was... When, when Trump was president for those four years. Before those four years, I was seeing a, a decrease on my checks every single fucking month. There was a difference. I was working more more hours, but I was getting paid. I was taking home less. And I was like, man, fuck. And I just worked. I survived. We, we did what we had to do. We put as much money and savings as we can. The one thing that I don't agree that Trump did, signed that shit saying that he's going to start giving people checks because, because of everything, because of COVID and all that. That's what I don't fucking agree with. He should not have done it. But then Biden should have not done it in a couple more times after that either. Just saying. Two wrongs don't make a right, bro. You can't keep on throwing money at shit think it's going to fucking fix something. It's not. But for those four years that Trump was president, oh my God. The amount of money that I was seeing on my checks, the amount, the, the, the way gas was, gas was so good. I just filled up, I just filled up for no reason. My shit is like 75% full. I was like, let's throw that 25 in there real quick. Cause, and, cause it was good to put gas. Cause I was like, wow, I'm not getting raped for the first time. My butthole hurt. First time I'm not getting raped. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Praise be to God, right? Food was cheaper. What I was spending, because me and my family go grocery shopping together. We don't Uber Eats and do any of that shit. We don't, we don't go and say, yo, go to Walmart, pack all my shit and bring it to me. And just leave it there. We don't do that. We actually go out as a family still. I know it's weird, but we still do it. And me and my wife go over the receipts. My wife is a penny pincher. She is, Absolutely. She goes down. Not bad. So why is it when Trump was president, I was able to fill a, 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 a cart to the brim where shit was falling over and spend 300, 250, 300 around there. And now I go with half of that and I'm spending four or 500. Why is that? 
Why do you think? Come on, man. Come on, man. And if you say, oh, it's best, the, the plans that Trump put into place, it started making effect when they took over office. And if they saw it in the first year that every, all, all the numbers are going crazy, why didn't they fight to get that fucking bill out of there? To fix some shit. Why didn't they do anything to fix it? It's the problem. The, 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 that's the case. They waited for Kamala to become president? Oh, we're going to fix it now. We were just trying to see how we're going to. We took these last couple of years to just to figure out how we're going to do it. Kamala's president, so now we're going to put it into... That makes no sense. I should have left this video for last. This is going to be a long motherfucker, but it's the truth. It's the truth. Give me facts. I don't give a fuck about nothing else. I don't care about nothing else. I don't care that Trump is blunt. That's the problem. You guys are too fucking sensitive. Somebody gets on a mic and says... Fuck it! I'm a I'm a blow these I'm a blow these motherfuckers out or sh whatever is it he said in that. Oh my God! Our president shouldn't be talking that way. Why? Because he's not human. Is he a fucking robot? I want my my president to have some type of defect on him because it shows me that he's fucking normal. I don't want no robot politician coming at me. Please vote for me because I brought Eminem. The fuck out of here! I don't want that. When she laughs, it looks like she's malfunctioning. I don't want to hear nothing. Give me paperwork. Give me facts. Give me facts of everything that people are saying. Give me facts because I guarantee I don't know everything off the top of my head, but I've heard enough and I followed this enough on my private time to understand that there is a lot of facts out there that could demolish anything that anyone says. It's just that I can't articulate it the way they can. That's the only reason why I don't really do this shit for real. Because if I'm able to articulate and have facts and be able to pop up links and shit so y'all motherfuckers can see the actual proof, I would do it. But no, I'm not. I'm not a politician. I don't want to be one. But I am Amer I'm an American citizen. I can tell you that. Born and raised in the playground where I spent most of my days. And as an American born in America, I, I want to make sure that my country and my kids' future are intact. Before I get the fuck out of here. That's my job as a father. Not as a Republican. Not as a Dominican. Not as a New Yorkian. Not as a nothing. As a father. Is to make sure that these kids are going to have a very, very good future. So if I see policies that I agree with. That lines up with my mentality of my kids future. Then I'm going to go with that president. So that's why I'm Republican. always Go have ahead. someone who can go from the, the spectrum of entertainment uh, to actually the Oval Office or the Prime Minister's Office in my case. And so um, in my work in the last 10 years, it was a smooth transition from singing about all that was wrong with the society I was living in to being the person See? that can provide... See? Because if you're going to talk about it, be about it. And that's why utmost respect for Shine, bro. Because he talked about it. He was that generation's, they considered him woke. If you want to call it anything. Because he was talking about fixing his community. He was talking about putting proper policies in play to actually change this shit. So when he, he went from talking about it to now being about it. And that's how you have to do. I bet this rap game shit is ruthless. I'm going to take my talent and my knowledge and I'm going to put you to something positive. That's exactly how you have to do it, bro. So when people say, oh, there's no way out. There's no way out. I'm in the fucking hood. There's no way out. Man, they don't give us a way out. Then explain shine then. Explain that to me and then I'll shut the fuck up. Promise you. He came from the same goddamn hood I came from. No dignity, no doubt. He came from the same goddamn dirty ass projects, so same goddamn dirty ass train stations. So you don't tell me that the hood is holding you back. You holding yourself back, my nigga. Because if he could do it, why can't you? He knows more. And I, I wonder how the fuck he knows more. Maybe because he picked up a book instead of picking up a gun? And he educated himself? Y'all don't want to do the work. That's what all that that is. 
is y'all don't want to do the work. Do not say that there's not a place for you and to get the fuck out the hood. Because if he could do it, then you could do it too. My nigga. And I say that out of love because we from the hood, BK all day. You already know what I'm talking about, son. Right? What you talking about? With the society I was living in mm -hmm. to being the person that can provide solutions Facts. Uh, for all that is wrong. And I don't think it's a stretch uh, to go from, you know, uh, an entertainer uh, to a politician. Ronald Reagan did it. And, and I believe that all the uh, musicians I grew up around, you know, we were all community oriented people. And, and you know, that's what hip hop does. We give back. We get there and we give back. Mm -hmm. So giving back on a legislative level uh, to me is just uh, the evolution of hip hop. It is, it is special, no doubt. When you think when I think about the Honorable Sean, I'm thinking about this documentary. That is the title of it. And I find myself wondering, I'm guessing why now one would easily surmise it's because of what's happened to sean diddy combs others would sit up there and look at it and say it is election time after all it seems the perfect opportunity for him to come out with something like this how do you answer that question why mm, now that's a good with question this, with, you know, with this documentary i have the been Show? i have been inundated with solicitations to do a documentary for the last 22 years to be factual, mm -hmm. Mark Wahlberg offered me think, like a million dollar deal back in 2004. And I, I have that proposal. I could share it with you. Uh, I just was always looking for the right I partner. I was just that, that was just that was just nice talk. I'm going to translate it to Brooklyn talk. I got the paperwork. Then I got offers to do that shit. I'm just going to translate to the Brooklyn. Some Brooklyn people are probably looking at this. I'm just translating it to Brooklyn because sometimes... When you a politician, you got to come correct. You got to come verbally correct. You can't come over here talking like a hood, nigga. Ain't nobody going to take you serious if you come over here. I, you know what I mean? Y'all motherfuckers want food stamps? Nah, fuck that. But I'm going to tell you what, though. I'm open, man, Kentucky Fried Chickens, and we're going to fucking get everybody a job. Everybody going to be making this paper. Minimum wages went up 15000 a week. Y'all better sell a lot of chicken if y'all paying that much, God. Man. We gonna have a shortage on chicken. Don't do that. <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about, though. All right, that. <laughs> no, no, I didn't know. I can't. I have to watch this. I'm gonna have to watch it. When is, is it out? Is it out? When was this? I, I'll look it up later. Share it with you. Uh, I just was always. <laughs> yeah, it's giving me the fuck. <laughs> It's right in the bottom. November 18th. Where we at? 15. So in three days? Oh, I'm 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 tapping in. A hundred percent. I'm tapping in. Looking for the right I believe partner. You. I was just looking for the right partner. And uh it had to make sense uh fiscally, because I'm, I'm a shrewd businessman. Um and it had to be the right partner. Um, right. And, and being the right partner was not just a financial commitment, it was a story that we were going to tell. I didn't want to tell the Diddy story. I did not want to tell. Why not? Oh, this because that's not because my he's a real nigga. He's from Brooklyn. That's why, Stevie. You need to relax with the dumbass question. I like Stevie because he likes to push people's buttons and ask crazy shit. You need to relax. You need to relax, sir. Why not? That was aggressive. Because he wants to tell his story. That's why he don't want to tell, don't talk about that. And he want to give that motherfucker more clout than he deserves. I'm going to answer the questions the way he should answer it. From the Brooklyn, from Brooklyn to Brooklyn, I'm going to answer it the way he's answering it. Motherfucker. Story. I did not want to tell. Why not? Oh, this, because that's not my story. My story is next prime minister of Belize. My story is power. My story is victory. My story is triumph over tragedy. That's my story. But allow me to interject. Allow me to interject. Because you emanate from the hip hop community, it is. I, I I use this respectfully. It's a rags to riches story because I, like you, get upset when we're always highlighting, you know, the rags to riches or the rags element of the rag to riches, riches story because everybody seems like every story is about that, about that. But in your case, it's special because as you highlight it, you're an opposition party leader. You're next in line to be the prime minister. And that is a huge, huge deal. It's one thing 
to all of a sudden, you know, to go from rags to literally being successful and making money. Well, you did that in the 90s, okay? Because you were making millions in the 90s. But to be a politician, to be a leader, to be in line, to be the leader of a nation, I mean, that's something entirely different, right. wouldn't you say? Yes, and, and, and that's the story. Unfortunately, I think I should have I should have done a bio documentary maybe 10 years ago. And this should have been another documentary uh, focused on my political mm -hmm. life and, and you know, uh, the journey uh, from maybe 10 years ago to now. But I just didn't do it. And that's why I said it was timely. Uh, but it was all about finding the right partners and people that understood. Like when you look at this documentary, it's the first time in my life that I've relinquished a creative control. Uh, in any type of entertainment project. Uh, and I, I had to trust the people that I was working with. Right. Uh, you know, and it, it just doesn't happen like that. And when I found those partners, everything else just happens to be coincidence. You know, two years ago, we started shooting. We signed a deal two years ago. We started shooting production maybe a year and a half ago. Um, and all the other things that you see happening I can't stop the world from, from happening, but you know, my story was bound to be told. And it's not like we just looked at what was happening and said, oh, come on, let's hurry up and, and, and tell the Shine story. The, the Shine story is overdue. And as I said, it was about finding the right partners. And with these uh, partners that I have, Marcus Clark and, and the Disney people, Hulu, Anscape, Disney Plus, if you look at the documentary, I had no creative control, but the documentary, uh, doesn't tell the Diddy story. It's not a gotcha, sensational uh, documentary in those terms of trying to exploit, uh, you know, his tragedy. Um, it's talking about what I've been through. And obviously, you know, we're forever linked. We're forever linked. I, I can never get away from that. I would prefer not to talk about it. I'll be honest with you. When I, when I first saw the documentary, um, one of my first objections was, why are you focusing so much on on the trial? Why you know we need to focus more on on Belize. You know let's let's focus more on how I made the album. Let's focus more on the creativity. Let's get more people to talk about what a great musician I was. Um, but unfortunately, a, a part of the story is the the pain. A part of the story is the sorrow. Yeah. A part of the story is yeah. The that's the thing. That's the thing about it that he he's stuck either way. He can't get away from Diddy. He his that name and his name is going to be stuck together forever. Like that's not going to ever disappear. That shit is never going to go anywhere. It's always going to be if you hear P Diddy, one of the names that are going to be attached to that is Shine. That's automatic. But I'm loving that he's on this platform and explaining what the documentary is going to be about before it comes out because that shows me that he doesn't give a fuck about numbers. Because if he focused more on the Diddy, which there are going to be some, I'm pretty sure there's going to be some Diddy shit there. Because he's too, like what well, he said, it's their their names are going to be forever together. So he's going to have to do this shit. He's going to have to talk about it. He's going to have to tell how he felt about it, how it was, and all this other shit. But it's mainly just a small part of the whole documentary. So it's still telling them, hey, we we're going to talk about it. But I'm not going to be focusing on it. I'm not going to be focusing on anything else but myself. And I'm loving that he's doing that on this platform because Stephen A. Smith gets a lot of views and a lot of people watching. You throw a name like Shine in there, forget about it. 100% they're gonna be, they, they, people are going to tap in and listen. Um, but I, I, I fuck with him. I, I fuck with him 100%. It, it, it shows me that as a leader that he is, He's focusing, he, he, his focuses are in another different realm than most politicians in any country. So it, that shows that Belize is in good hands, man. Facts. I like him. Story is the, the That's pain. my guy. A part of the story is the sorrow. A part of the story is the defeat, is the devastation. And, and we just can't escape that. Let me, because, I, I, and when I use this word educate, I mean respectfully, because obviously you're an educated brother, you know what you're talking about. I'm talking about from a media perspective. From a media perspective, let me educate you on this level. You, nobody, Diddy's story will be told. And no matter what story is going to be told about Diddy, there's a potpourri of things to talk about about him for months 
in years to come. When some folks are talking and when folks are talking to, to Shine and they're talking about Shine, they want to know about Shine <laughs> himself from his perspective, what he experienced. So tell us what exactly did you experience? People are going to go to December 27, 1999. They're going to look at things like that. They want to know what happened <coughs> to Shine himself. In your words, what happened to you? Well, you know, in, in my words, I, I said uh, so many years ago, back in 2001, I knew that was my first double XL cover out of about six. Right. And the cover is Death Before This Honor. It was me talking about not snitching on Diddy and not getting him in trouble to get myself out of trouble. I said that. Right. Um, you know, 20 odd years ago. So I've always maintained in every interview I did on tour recently when I healed and I moved on and I forgave. But for years, I was saying, you know, what a creep I thought he was and how he destroyed my life. And I, at one point, I thought he was the devil. But because of the power of Diddy, which is so loud as far as a pop culture icon, nobody listened. Um, so I moved on. And, and, and I, I pivoted my See? life to him. See? He's like, I've been said shit. Nobody want to pay attention. Yeah, I thought that we would just, I was out here just talking shit about Diddy. Now that she coming at the light, now I was looking good. This is called triumph over bullshit. Because that's exactly what it is. Yeah, I didn't believe me all those years ago when I said the shit. And now that everything's coming to fruition and everybody is, is looking at Diddy crazy. Oh, what did I say? But he's not flaunting it, and he's not pushing it out. He's not putting out tweets saying, told you. He's not being petty. That's that's God. That's called karma. You fuck people over. Karma's going to fuck you worse than you fuck them. That's just what's going to happen. And Diddy, he's got a he's got a, a 30-incher coming for him. With, and, and this time, Prince ain't got no baby oil. Fuck you going to do? Raw dog. That is going to hurt. <laughs> And I don't care because all the people that he's hurt, he deserves every every stitch in that butt. He deserves every single one of them. It, it, it's, it's just weird to me that people are, are, there's still people defending him. That's what's crazy about it. Nope, sorry, man. Sorry, man. You're not going to be accused of all this shit. <coughs> You're not going to be accused of all this shit. And even let's say he comes out innocent of all charges. Let's just say <laughs> he's still going to have all this attached to his story. And that's a big blemish to have. But I say the very small chance, there's video evidence of how Diddy is away from the cameras. And there's video evidence of it. So when you have facts and pictures and all this other, and testimonies and all this other shit, nah, I'm pretty sure it's going to be bad. And anybody that's connected with that should go right along with them. People that were covering shit up for him and hiding shit and paying people off and doing all that, bag them all up, put them in there too. God, take them all out of here. I don't care. I've been following this. <coughs> excuse me. I've been following this behind the scenes by myself because the politics on YouTube is crazy. So I just wanted to really dig, dig into this. And, and, and it's not looking good for him at all. At all. And, and there's, I don't feel bad for him. I don't feel sorry that, they, that he's going through what he's going through. He should be going through the same pain and anguish that he put on everybody else that he did for all these years. All these artists and all these people that could have done something different if they weren't like locked under his poison. What? Imagine. Imagine. The, it gives me goosebumps and tears at the same time. Imagine if Justin Bieber never met Diddy. Just close your eyes and just imagine what type of artist he would be today. When he didn't have all this baggage weighing him down. Just imagine that for a second. 
at, at such a young age, I feel so bad for, for Justin and, and, and always, always, I, sit, I, I, I stop sometimes when I'm going through my crazy day and I stop and I think sometimes and, his, and he just pops into my head and I'm just like, I feel so bad that at such a young age, his life was literally taken away from him. What you saw was a shell of an artist. Wonderful, absolutely wonderful singer. Oh my God, that boy has a voice, Jesus. And what he could have done if he never met that awful fucking human being. It, 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 it sucks so bad that he, that he had it bad such, in such a young age. When he was supposed to be thriving, when he was supposed to be like, there was nothing that Diddy could have gave him that he couldn't gotten himself. Diddy was using him to big up Diddy. That's what he was doing. Justin Bieber could have done absolute, probably even better if he was never involved with Puff Daddy. And that's that's how I believe it. So when a person like Sean going to come over here and he's trying to push his story and, and about, you know, his anguish and his struggles to get to where he's at now. And, and you, and, and, and these interviewers and these people want to always bring up the juicy topic, which is Diddy. I would find that very disrespectful because you're here, you know, you're here to talk about me. You're not here to talk about Diddy. Even though that's the, the main topic that everybody's fucking talking about, millions of people are getting fucking views for it, for about, about covering this whole entire thing. So there, this generation is trending, people. This is what the topic is. Cool. This, is, this is, has nothing to do with Diddy. It's a very s small sliver of the pie that is shine. And I hate when interviewers do that because when I'm trying to when I'm trying to learn an artist or follow an artist and learn what type of artist that, that person is, and I see their interviews and then whatever's trending is the main focus of the interview, I turn the interview off. Because I, I, I already heard the first time of him explaining this question, and now he's doing it on every fucking platform, explaining the same goddamn question over and over again for an hour. So, so... Focus more on shine. You know, have you seen that the 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 documentary yet? Have you actually been able to see it all finished, done up, and everything? And did you like it? And, you know, what are the main points? What? How do you think you represented your your message in this movie? And and da, 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 what do you think about the directors and the producers? And don't, that's what you need to be talking to this man about. This Diddy shit. As Diddy's publicity, that's Diddy shit. He's he's made a name for himself on his own without using Diddy's name for anything. And I think it's disrespectful as an interviewer to bring up topics that you know is trending and you know that it's going to be the majority of your conversation in this interview. So so let's not do that. Let's not do that. Now, Sean is his own man. Um. So I moved on. And, and, and I, I pivoted my life to healing, to forgiveness, and to taking accountability for what I can control. And I can't control what someone did to me decades ago. I can't control them not wanting to pay reparations, not wanting to, to make right. You know, if people say, oh, Diddy gave me millions to, to go to jail, nothing. Probably made uh, a two what I thought were offensive uh, contributions over the last 20 something years which led to a breakdown in, in the relations. Um, but I moved on. So, so yes, was I the sacrificial lamb? Of course. Did I take the fall? Yes. There was no quid pro quo. There was not, listen, we're going to have $10 million waiting for you when you come out. I'll just do the right thing. I did that on my own. Right, uh, right. You know, and, and, and I've been saying that. It's not, it's not anything new. What? But in the documentary, right. just like in this interview, I can't say to you, Stephen A., I don't want to talk about uh, Diddy. Let's talk about me becoming the prime minister. Let let you know I can't no. talk about only what I want to talk about. I have to be fair and transparent to the audience. 
Um, but I, I've been saying the same thing if you do your research. Um, but so, so pretty much he's saying the kind of same thing that I'm saying. He's saying the kind of same thing that I'm saying. He's, he understands that he has to answer those questions because he understands that that is going to be part of the, that's going to be a, a part of the documentary and not even a part of the documentary, but also a part of his life. This is this is something that happened to me. That's nine years of my life that I stayed in prison, taking the heat for somebody else. And when I came out, he disappeared on me. He ghosted. And he's been talking about it since then in interviews and podcasts and shit like that. And now all of a sudden people are just, come on, dog. He's been said this shit already. He understands that he has to answer the question, but, but, but not on the part of, of Sean, but on the part of the interviewer. You guys know you guys don't have to ask that question when you guys already know there's footage of him out there saying, answering the question that you're go- you're about to ask. You're asking that question because you know there's going to be a big pop on the description or on the title of the of the video that people are going to click. So you so you know like you guys understand what I'm saying. You guys understand what I'm saying. It's Hollywood shit to the audience. Um, but I, I've been saying the same thing if you do your research. Um, but he, listen, he also mentored me uh, at, in, in the year or so we spent working together to, to make one of the greatest hip-hop albums ever. You know, I learned a lot as far as being an entrepreneur, uh, as far as being you know, a disruptor and a trailblazer. Um, and so I got exactly what I went to, to the university uh, of Bad Boy uh, with Diddy as professor when it comes to entertainment and, and even things that I've been able to carry with me as far as work ethic, as far as, you know, See, manif- and that's another thing like they, they, you can't, Diddy would have never had the power that he has if he wasn't extremely good at what he does. There, there's no way, shape and form that anybody could take away Diddy's actual, when it comes to, making the music but not only making the music but making an empire a business empire if he didn't know how to be a businessman or how to run shit he would have never gotten as far as he got and he would have got back probably the first two three years of being of popping they probably would have caught on and he would have been out of here but he knows what the fuck he's doing most psychopaths do most psychopaths study their prey he knows how to poke people's weaknesses, and he knows how to pull the fucking strings to make them bite. <clears throat> so, for people saying the same shit to De- about Diddy for the past twenty something years, they've been saying this about Diddy. It's just that now that there's there's proof now that he's actually doing the shit that people were saying years ago that he was doing. Um. I forgot what I was going to say, but it, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter because karma's a bitch. Diddy right now is absolutely fucked. Completely fucked. And I'm happy to see that is kind of God's plan that made him have the courage to take the fall that night in, in New York. To... In order for him to, to actually get out early, I would say, get out of uh, out of out of Diddy's hooks early, because once, all right, now you're my fall guy. You're you're going to be the one that I'm tossing out the group pretty much and throwing you to the wolves. I want nothing to do with you. Was the best thing that happened to him. If it wasn't for that, God knows how deep this could have gone, or how much poison he ca- he could have kept on feeding him the more they worked with each other. It could have been bad for him. But God made that happen in order in order for him to be like, all right, you're not going to learn if I, if it, God's, in, in God's eyes, you're not going to learn if I just sprinkle uh, clues here and there. You're going to have to do some time. You're going to have to really feel it to understand that this guy is not a good guy to be, with, be around. And he did nine years.
I think nine years is enough time to be like, oh, fuck, I learned my lesson and I still got time to change it. And then come out and then be successful as he is right now. So, I mean, God loves hurt, but you reap all the benefits of it in the end. And that is the God honest truth. There's people like Sean and there's a lot of other people that have been in those type of situations and God made an impact in their life to get them out and actually walk the right path. So, do you want my proof? There's the proof right there. Go ahead. Uh, with Diddy as professor, uh, when it comes to entertainment and, and even things that I've been able to carry with me as far as work ethic, as far as, you know, manifesting the greatness that you want to achieve, you know, so there, there right. are some positives. Um, but obviously, um, going to jail for 10 years when that could have been avoided or it's someone that, you know, my mom entrusted, you know, our 19-year-old son that they would do right by me, um, you know, to, to, to send me to prison uh, mm -hmm. when we could have avoided that. You know, there's nothing we can ever do to change that. And so when I'm telling the story, I can't whitewash that. I can't sanitize that. But that's not necessarily the story I want to tell. So I hope that the next uh, documentary, the next movie I do will be about, you know, uh, my rise to become prime minister. When Facts. you heard, I, like I want to move on from this because I want to. I'm I'm transitioning yeah. to who you are. I want to yeah. be very very clear. Yeah, 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 yeah. Move on. <laughs> Take that and split it. And that's how you tell he's a good politician because he knows how to explain himself with proper etiquette, clear explanations, words that people could actually understand. Be like, oh, okay, I get it. Mm-hmm. Sean's the man. Come on. I'm not going to be unfair to you and just focus on this. I'm transitioning to who you are and where you stand right now. But I'm just trying to paint a picture. When you yeah. heard them sentence you to prison mm -hmm. for 10 years, you still are. could you take us back to that moment and what kind of effect you thought that would have on you at that moment in time? I was I was devastated. But I'm, I'm such an eternal optimist um, that I just kept thinking, you know, I'm, I'm going to get a, a bill. I'm going to get a bill. I'm going to get the judge to give me a bill pending appeal, which is what Tupac got. Uh, when Tupac had his, his case, uh, Death Row was able to get him out uh, on bail um, pending his appeal. And so I just kept living every day uh, with hope that I'd get a bail pending appeal or, or I'd have a successful appeal um, and get out. And I never gave up hope. And I was very spiritual and I was a Orthodox Jew. Still, I'm still spiritual. I don't, I don't I'm not as observant as I used mm -hmm. to be. Still wrap the film and still observe Yom Kippur and all the high holidays and Shabbat. Right. Um, but I uh, was always optimistic. But, you know, listen, the first night in prison, I got on my knees and I, I cried and I said to God, you know, listen, uh, I'm not, I'm not even going to, not even going to question you, uh, because I didn't question you when I when I was driving that Bentley last week. I didn't question you when I was driving that Ferrari. I didn't question you living on the 51st floor of the Trump Towers, which is where I was living at the time. Wow, this is before <laughs> Marga and, and all that right. stuff. I didn't. Um, I didn't question you when I sold a million records going from a poor kid in Belize that didn't even have a toilet system right. and used to have to take the waste bucket to the canal. I never questioned you how you took me from that right. to a millionaire at the age of 18 to one of the most popular rappers in, in America and the world. I didn't say, well, why me, God? So I'm not going to say, why me, God, now? Right. All I'm going to ask you is to give me the ability to endure this the same way that you gave me the ability to make it through everything I made it to this point and to accomplish the things that I accomplished. I felt this was my biggest test to date. And the same way God blessed me to be able to uh, not just survive, but to thrive through uh, all of the adversities mm -hmm. up to that point, I knew that God would be able to give me the power to get through this. And, and so I did that every day. So I was present every day. I never closed my eyes and tried to get away from what I was facing because I, I knew instinctively, I knew that 
It's just like if you want to win a, a world championship, whether it's baseball, whether it's football, whether it's basketball, it's grueling. The guys that win the chips are the guys that don't go to the clubs when they're, you know, traveling on the road. It's the guys that are in. The- Do you know they indoct- they inducted him as he he was. He when when Diddy got him, he was indoctrinated as he's the Brooklyn dude. Like everybody in Brooklyn was claiming him. You're like, nah, he he Brooklyn. There were motherfuckers in Queens and those motherfuckers in, in, in the Bronx. And they're like, nah, 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 nah. He from Brooklyn, baby. Brooklyn all day. What are you talking about? That's my dude right there. I don't give a fuck with him. Skip. I just love it. I just love it. I, just, I love that so much that for the past twenty something years, I had that has been in my proper daily vocabulary. That's one of my, my one of my things that I do. Skippy dip. Go to the clubs when they're you know traveling on the road. It's the guys that are in the arena practicing. Right. You know, it's the guys that that mm. don't sleep because they're practicing. It's the guys that that go through excruciating training. Right. To to make sure that they're conditioned, you know, for uh, the championships. And and so for me, I looked at what I was going through as me graduating to the next level whether i was convincing myself and i was being delusional uh it worked because i did graduate and i am on the next level when did you begin studying judaism that was in prison correct i i became uh spiritual in a monotheistic way um before i i was incarcerated so i always believed in monotheism mm-hmm. and I, that's why i changed my name to moses because moses was always my mm-hmm. hero you know, Moses was a person that was wealthy, powerful, you know, worked with Pharaoh. But Moses had a, a moral crisis. And because of that moral crisis, that's what was right and wrong and how you treat human beings. He left all his money, all his power, and he went into the wilderness and he led the Israelites to freedom. Mm-hmm. But he did all that talking to God. So when I was 15 years old, one of my friends got his brains blown out right in front of me. And he was one of the toughest guys that was around us. He was the toughest guy that I knew. And when I saw mm-hmm. that happen to him, I, I became, uh, you know, just uh, awoken by mortality. And I said, if that could happen to him, there's no way that I'm going to survive these streets of Brooklyn. Right. And that's when I started praying. And I started talking to God the same way that my grandmother told me about this Moses, and, you know, that's how I learned about God, not through an intermediary. I'm not judging anyone in their religion because we all, there's a different route. He's from Brooklyn, baby. Los ah. Angeles. You can take the train. You can drive. Uh, everyone has a different route to where they need to arrive as a human being. Right. But monotheism spoke to me. Uh, Moses, from the five books that is in the Quran and in the Torah, spoke to me. Um, and so I started having this conversation with God every day because every day was life or death for me in Brooklyn, literally. Well, I, I'm, I'm from Hollis, Queens. I'm see, from Hollis- see he's talk- he knows what he's talking about. He knows that the, the Brooklyn at the time when he was growing up, when he was doing what he was doing, and I forgot what side of Brooklyn he came from. I, I don't remember because Brooklyn is pretty big. Um, but... All neighborhoods in Brooklyn at that time was exactly alike. It was broken down. It was it was drug addicts and drug dealers and, and, and murders and stabbings and robberies and all types of shit going on on a daily fucking basis. In order for you to get from your house to your school, when you get home, your mother, your father, bendición. You know what this, that means? Blessings. Mother, blessings, father. I made it out. I, I got I'm here. We made it back safe. Nothing happened to us. We good. Because of that, that that time, that time frame when he was 15 living in Brooklyn, because I think he came, he came from Belize, I think it was, as a baby. No, he was born here, I think it was, but his parents, his family's from over there. I don't know how it works. I don't don't know how that part works. I know this motherfucker is a Brooklynaire. Question always in my mind was whether he came when he was young, like in the in his 14, 15, or was he born here and just has family over there? I never understood that part. But 
he understands the streets. He understand he came from that property, just like JD Vance. JD Vance came from that 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 redneck property bullshit. Motherfuckers didn't have money, man. Yeah, he had anything. So it's just politicians like that that have that dark story, that have that dark past, that's been around and seen shit like that. He came from the same neighborhood that I came from. If he ever ran for anything out here, I'm in there. Like, so if he comes to Florida, like, yo, I want to be the governor of Florida. I'm, I got you. Because I know where he came. He came from the same place I came from. So when I see that, I see, yo, you did it too? It feels like our, our own little private club. That we came out of that and, and we're living better lives for it. We still have that strong mind mentality when it comes to, you know, still living by some type of, you know, respect and street rules. But at the same time, using it for what we're trying to do positive and everything. So when I see another uh, another another brother coming from from where, from the literal same streets I came from. I'm all for it, bro. I'm all for it. I'm all for this man's success, and I'm all for everything he stands for, bro. And that's a fact. In Brooklyn, literally. Well, I, I'm I'm from Hollis Queens. I'm from Hollis Queens. Bunch of relatives in Brooklyn. Bunch of relatives right. in the Bronx. I know what you're talking about. Right. Um, listen, uh, we're we're running out of. Yeah, but at the same time, brother, your forehead is shiny. Mm -mm. I can see you from the J train, bro. <laughs> Oh my God! If I'm taking the J train and I'm looking down, yo, that's Steven right there, Steven, shiny motherfucker. <laughs> Tom, I'm so mad. There's only gonna be third man because I could have sat down with you for two hours with the stuff you talking about because I got a whole bunch of right. stuff that I want to get to. But I want to ask you this: how how on earth did you become the leader of the opposition party in Belize? Let's I go. know your dad. Uh, if remember my okay. correctly, correct me if I'm wrong. According to my research, first black prime minister in Belize. I mean, yes, yes, I, yes. how did you become? Most... How did you become the leader of the opposition party? How did you climb that high? Well, remember, I grew up in in, in, in I left Belize when I was eight. Grew up in Brooklyn with my there mom. There you go. That's what I wanted to know. That's what I wanted to know. So he was living with his dad in Belize, came at eight, and then lived in Brooklyn with his mom. Got you. Now the story makes sense. Bring it together and make it make sense. <laughs> I don't know why I sang that jingle, but I, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I am very happy that I did. I am extremely happy that I, I sang that jingle. I did. Uh, so I, my, I love right. my dad. Him and I, you know, I have the best relationship uh, that, than we've ever had. Yeah. Obviously, we've had our difficulties in, in the documentary. You see him being the honorable person that he is and, and owning up to that. Right. Um, but when I got involved in politics, like everything else in my life, my dad didn't have anything to do with it. You know, he was uh, surprised when, when he heard from the media. So how'd you get in it? When I went back to Belize, I was living in Paris uh, about in 2013. And I went to Belize to visit for my mom's 60th birthday. And... Mm -hmm. You know, I would always go back to my community, see how people are living, go visit, you know, um, different relatives. And people would be complaining, we don't know where we're going, you know, uh, things about the change and we don't know about the new leaders that are going to take over. You know, why don't you get involved? And there was a friend of the family that said, Shine, this is your time. We need you. You have this global experience. You have your own wealth. You're not like these corrupt politicians that are going to get involved in politics to get rich and to get famous because you already have that. You actually mean well for the people. And these are the type of leaders that we need. And I said to myself, you know, what am I doing in Paris? Belize needs me. I'm going to come back home and I'm going to get involved. And that was in 2013, about 11 years ago. And I was working ever since then. I started off wow. as the, the vice chairman of the constituency. And I opened up a resource center. And I just kept working every day. Ironically enough, my uncle, who uh, held the seat that I had, told me that he wasn't going to support me because he already made a promise to one of his friends and that, you know, wow. he's going to beat me in a convention. And so I better, I better find something else to do because... I'm never going to become the area representative as long as he's there because he already made promises to someone else. Oh, wow. I felt the same way I did in Brooklyn to become 
Shine, the rapper, dodging bullets, chasing down street teams, jumping over the desk at, at, at Def Jam so that the right. A&R would hear me. I fought uh, to get here. And so I first won my seat in the House of Representatives. Then I, I won a, a convention, a national convention, a party convention to become the party leader. And that's how you become, you know, the, the opposition leader in the House of Representatives. And I'll fight to win 16 seats to become the next prime minister in the next elections. Mm. And you, 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 so in other words, you're on the verge of being the next prime minister of Belize. And, and, and when, when, when's that election is. taking place? It's, uh, it's not easy. You, 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 you here. You here. It's, I'm rooting for it's you. Not it's going to happen. I'm, I'm, it's going to happen. I'm, 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 I'm a step away from it. And I believe the economy, inflation, similar to what happened here in the United States, uh, you know, that's what people are looking at. You know, people's lives are not better mm. in Belize uh, over the last four years of this new administration. So we're going to continue to take that message to all believers. Can you say it one more time for the people in the back? Can you say it one more time for the people in the back? One more time, one more time for the people in the back. <laughs> I want to sing today. I don't know why, man. I think it's because Sean said, skip it up and do it, do it, do go. Swing. Go <laughs> Oh my God! Everybody can be like, "That's the only shit you know about him." No, I know a, lot, a couple more so I ain't gonna lie, I haven't heard Sean shit for a minute though. I ain't gonna lie, it's been a minute since I really dove into any type of Sean shit. I might have to go back to it, man, just to give him a little clicks. I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give him a little couple clicks because he's still getting money off of it. You got something on YouTube? I'm, I'm gonna click the shit out of it, bro. Over the last four years of this new administration, so we're gonna continue to take that message to all Belizeans, right? And we're gonna continue to work. Uh, to formulate policies Fire. that solve their problems. Fire. And how long, again, that election would be when? Two years, three years? What, 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 well, what's no, the time? That, that election could be as early as, as, as 90 days. Um, I've, been, oh, wow. I've been in the House of Representatives for the last four years, and so elections could be anywhere. Why you think he here with you, Stephen A. Smithy? You want to push that political stuff, too. Yeah, he he want to win them chair. Go ahead, hustle. How are you hustling? You promoting mad stuff right now, Sean. That's multitasking like a motherfucker. Because if you don't know who Sean is and you're watching this, you're like, oh shit, I'm going to check out the documentary. I'm going to check out his music. If I didn't know who Sean was, I'm going to. And I'm running. So that's going to help my political side too. That's a, that's a triple whammy. You see, people from Brooklyn don't play around. It's all I'm saying, man. People from Brooklyn don't play, son. We're from 90 to the next maybe 180 days. We we suspect 90 days. And obviously, people are going to be watching the Honorable Sean. We're going to be watching this documentary. I will. When they ask you, because inevitably, at least in the United States of America, they're going to ask you, did you hear anything about P. Diddy? Did you hear what happened? How do you feel Came about what happened? This shit. What are you going to say? about him if anything at I, all at this point I, I in time pray, in your life i pray for uh the victims i pray for people like cassie who has been proven that she's a victim and and everyone else i'm not sure the credibility of everyone else i i pray for the victims and i, and I pray for diddy i i pray that he's able to do some soul searching and even if he's not guilty of, of the accusations um, there's a reason he is where he is right now, and it's up to him to communicate with God and and to try fact. to cleanse his soul and uh, pivot and move forward and and redeem himself. Uh, and I pray that he's able to go through that journey and that he has success because the same way I was rehabilitated and I reformed myself, I'm not here to condemn anyone in perpetuity. You know, I, I hope that that uh, justice is served. If he's not guilty, the judicial system will decide that if he is. I hope that he he's contrite and he turns his life around. And I hope that the victims can get closure. That's beautiful. Direct question. See, man, I want to be just like Sean when I grow up. I'm still in my adolescent years. I want him to suffer. An eye for an eye. And then after after the right repercussions happen, then the the healing begins. And but you had time to heal. This just happened to me, Sean. <laughs> and when you it, you've made it very very clear and the people who love you have made it very very clear you got a bad rap you took the rap you suffered because of it unfairly right is that 
a roundabout way or not an indirect way of saying it wasn't you, it was Diddy who did that shooting in 1999? I was defending myself. So I, I would never say that um, I did not fire in self-defense. But the question is, who else fired? Uh, the, the reality is, the fact is, there were shell casings found from two other guns uh, in addition to mine shell casings that did not obviously match mine. The uh, forensics never took the, um, the ballistics out of the victims. So we don't know who shot the victims. And according to one victim, gotcha. did he shoot them? Uh, and and th those are just the facts. Uh, I maintain that I was acting in self-defense and I continue to say that. And so I'm innocent in the sense of I did not uh, intentionally try to hurt anyone i was defending myself but what complicates it is that two other people or two other guns were fired um and and mm. the victim says did he shot her so uh that's the reality right. so bad right, listen man. i got news for you i gotta let you go i thank you for your Damn, time with bro. this interview my man i at some point in time, I'm not going to put it past me to come to Belize uh, to, I was just to about interview to say the prime that. minister. You have an open invitation <laughs> I, 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 to Belize. I'm, I'm about to roll out there. I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited sure the about that possibility. Tourism, even, even though I'm not in government, I try to work with the, the minister of tourism to promote Belize in a bipartisan right. way. So I'm sort of tourism ministry. We'd be happy to welcome you. Right. Um, and, and we could hopefully time it around my memoir because I'm coming out with a book. Mm. I got to. I got to write this and, and consider you know, it done. Unlike, unlike the documentary that I relinquished creative control, the book is going to be all me. So maybe you could time it. I'm going to tap in on maybe that. You could come before, check it out and then come back again for the memoir. I want you down there. I want you Absolutely. to be a regular. I want you to build a house I'll be, down I'll there. I'll be Listen, I want you to take some of that on, money from we that, from that new contract you're getting. <laughs> no problem, man. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to come down, but I want more than 30 minutes. I want more than 30 minutes, all right? Absolutely. We got to hang out. Absolutely. All right. All Thank right. you, Stephen. Man, all the best. Right. I'm so proud. I'm, man, I'm so, so proud of you. So proud of all that you've been doing. All the best to you, man. Keep making big things happen, all right? Thank you, my brother. God bless you. And God bless your viewership. God bless Belize. God bless America. God bless you. Thanks. No doubt. My thanks to the one and only Moses Sean Barrow. Is the Honorable it? Sean premieres November 18th on Hulu. Do not miss it. Make sure you check it out. Trust me, it will be worth it. Coming up, back to the United States of America because, I mean, compared to this country right now, Belize might hour. be the place to go. We had an hour. I'm going to have to cut my other videos short. Because that boxing is 555. The boxing match, the boxing match starts at 8. I'm good. That's why I moved alive to Sunday because I'm I'm absolutely gonna tap into this uh Tyson and Jake Paul shit. <laughs> I'm just saying, oh. I'm just saying, Trump is on it already with a whole bunch of cabinet appointments. We might as well just start bracing ourselves now. Why even wait till January? We might as well start bracing ourselves now. Bracing ourselves for season. what? Might be the last one, good one we have for a while. I hope not, but it just might be the case. We'll talk about that. Plus, your I don't want to talk about none of that. I hope that I can skip this. I don't. I don't want to sit here and argue about tweets. To close out the show next, right here on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Don't go away. Be right back. Listen up, y'all. I have an important announcement that I need you to hear. Here at the Stephen A. Smith Show, we're determined to win at any cost. And that's why we partnered with Prize Picks, America's number one sports fantasy app to help turn our sports knowledge into some big time cash. You see, Prize Picks is a daily fantasy app where you can choose as, you know, as a secretary. I mean, if that isn't bad enough, ladies and gentlemen, I, I mean, another appointment. This, this Pete Hegseth, former, a now former Fox News host, I know they're going to listen to these veterans of the Iraq and Afghanistan war. You know, I get all of that. I understand that. I'm not, I'm not throwing any shade on his service in our military. God bless him. Appreciate and honor his service. And by the way, Trump just tapped Marco Rubio as a secretary of state. I don't mind that. Marco Rubio is a highly respected Marco Rubio senator is out of Florida. Um, 
Marco and Rubio he's been around for a while. Fire. Ran against Trump in 2016. Couldn't do anything with them, but Marco Rubio is respected. Highly knowledgeable, very articulate. Very. I have no problem with him being Secretary of State whatsoever. Just wanted to get that out there. Not at all. But if you look at some of these appointments, could y'all just look on the screen, please? Could you just look on the screen for yourself? Mike Huckabee, former governor of Arkansas. Okay, that's fine. Ambassador to Israel. CIA director uh, 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 John Radcliffe. He's got some experience, not with the CIA, but, you know, he was obviously a Trump supporter. Uh, you know, just threw away all the Russian disinformation they proclaim uh, was existing. I got that. I got that. Christy Nome, Secretary of Homeland Security. Okay, Stephen Whitcoff, Special Envoy to the Middle East. William McGinley, White House Counsel. You just get the impression let me not forget Lee Zeldin, congressman from Long Island. He'll be the new EPA administrator. Uh, administrator. So he goes from a congressman to an administrator, so even if it is for the EPA. Okay, okay. Environmental Protection Agency, for those of you who don't know. It just seems to me that what Trump is determined to do is have people loyal to him. As opposed to prioritizing their level of competency as politicians. I'm not questioning any of these individuals' capabilities, I'm not saying they can't do the job. I have no clue. I know none of them. I'm not trying to cast any aspersions on them. I'm simply using... So, one thing, and I'll shut up. I promise you. So, But you do know who Elon Musk is. You do. You absolutely know who Elon Musk is. And just so you can have an idea of how he's structuring his team, look what he appointed Elon Musk to Department of Government Efficiency, along with Vivek. I can't even try to pronounce his last name right now. Who better than a millionaire, one of the very richest people in the planet, to be the Department of Government Efficiency? He made his billions on efficiency. <sighs> I just, that's all I wanted to say. That's all I wanted to say. It needed to be said. And this is evidence to highlight why you had so many people out there so damn nervous about Trump. Because you see some of these folks, and you know the first thing you hear is how... And he said that, that this is going to be the last Christmas that we're going to have. Dude, my last three Christmases has been horrible. What are you talking about? When you got money, you can't talk to me about that shit. You can't, you can't, on this period, I know you, you didn't come from money. You made every single dollar that you got, Steven. I'm not saying that. But you, at this moment in this economy, you cannot talk about how this economy has hurt you how you had a, 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 a great Christmas this year. You have a great Christmas every year because you have the money to do it. Because you made a name for yourself and you worked your ass off to get that money. No hate here. But do not talk about how normal people like us sit here and try to pinch our pennies and make sure that we can at least buy one good gift for each of our kids. Do not tell me that in this moment right now, 2024, you're dealing with any of that. So you have no room to talk about how these Christmases has been in the last couple of years. No right in the, in your mind. For the last couple of years, you can talk about, you don't have an opinion on what the broke person thinks in their head when it's Christmas time or it's holiday season. Don't. Because that's not fucking fair. That's not fair at all. Because you see some of these folks and you know the first thing you hear is how loyal all of these people were. And then we also got to go to what's been reported. Because it was, also been, it was also reported that former Vice President Mike Pence was quoted as saying this quote. I don't think the president should pardon anyone who assaulted a police officer at the United States Capitol on January 6, 2021. And that he's literally, quote, praying that President-elect Trump and President-elect Vance will stand on the commitments that... They will make when they raise their right hands on that day. I read that quote from former Vice President Mike Pence. Because, ladies and gentlemen, he was the guy in 2021 assigned to certify the election. And the election results that showed Joe Biden 
would be the new president of the United States of America. It was he who Trump was speaking about when he spoke to that crowd outside near the U.S. Capitol. Don't do that. Don't do that. Stop. Stop clipping little things that he said, because if you play the whole entire thing that he said that day, you'll know that he's just do me that favor, please. Before you say anything in the comment sections or before you make any any advice, do me that favor and actually listen to that. What what Trump said. Just listen to what he said. And now listen to what he said. And that's all I'm going to say. It's over now. There's no point of fighting. He's, he's president. You can talk and you can shame him all you want. Freedom of speech is beautiful, isn't it? Then you can say whatever you want and you can slander anybody you want. With the, and, and, and you know what kills me is that these people are up here and they're supposed to be smarter than us. And then they're spewing out this bullshit on screen. That's an absolutely wrong quote that you just said right now. Trump never said to go to the Capitol and raise fucking hell. He said they have the right to have a peaceful protest in front of the Capitol. As long as they go there peacefully, then nobody can stop them. And, and that's an absolute fucking fact. So that's exactly what he said. Go and play the fucking whole thing and then let Trump tell you what he said. So that right there is fucking false. Come on, dog. At the election where Vice President Kamala Harris spoke right before the election, imploring them to save our country. We have to stop this. We have to protest peacefully, blah, 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 blah. And then they ultimately stormed in there and they were screaming. Where's the part that he said to do it? Why did you just skip that whole part? You said what I said. He said peace for protest, blah, 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 blah. When you do that, you can make anything sound stupid. Imagine if if if, if, if Albert Einstein said, E is e square, nobody's going to take that as nothing. They're going to take that, they're going to throw it away. You can make anything sound stupid. You said it and you just made it a funny noise to, to prove your point that it's bullshit. When it's not. He never said to them. Those people individually decided to gather up in a group, go over there and cause hell. Because they're in there. Those are called radical rights. Those are the ones that got, they're nuts. So they went there and they did what the fuck they did, whatever the fucking case was, whatever. Don't, don't put that on him that he told them to do that because he did it. Come on, bro. Yeah, I think it's got to be. They defecated in the offices of elected officials. They barricaded through the barricades. They killed a, a police officer died. So they should, the person that killed the police officer should do life in prison or give him the chair or whatever you want to do with that one individual person that decided to do that. Don't crucify fucking Trump for other people's fucking actions. Because they took what he said the wrong way. The same way that y'all motherfuckers got a whole bunch of people that don't make fucking sense. We have some of those two on our side. That's an absolute fucking fact. The people that illegally went in there and started doing illegal shit. They have to pay the price, lock them up, whatever. But how does that fall of what Trump told them to do? They were going to do it whether Trump said to or not. A woman was shot by Secret Service. And yet we're looking at a situation where Mike Pence doesn't want those folks pardoned. And meanwhile, Trump has been on the record guaranteeing that he would pardon all 1,500 folks who found themselves indicted and incarcerated because of their actions. That's the one thing. That's the that's the one thing that I don't agree. That he should have he should have let them if they did something illegally, whether they misheard you or not, whether you felt feel guilty because you think that you caused that. Because that's the reason why I believe Trump did that is because he personally felt guilty because. They took what he said the wrong way and he caused this shit to happen. 
So with with his with his power, he wanted to do something to get these people out because he felt bad about it. Stop making it more than what it is. Y'all you making it more complicated than what the fuck it is. Because I believe that that's why Trump did it. But he says something different or not, I believe in his heart. Take away the cameras, take away the makeup. I believe in his heart, that's why he did it, because he felt guilty for it. But it was that his morals didn't go very well on that part, because he, he wanted to help him. He feels bad. He feels that these American citizens are in jail and shit, all this shit happened because of something he said. You, as a human being, you want to try to do everything possible to fix the fix the mistake or, or whatever it is it that these people thought he said. But I don't I don't agree. He should have let them sit there. And if you did something there that you it was illegal, I believe that you should have been there locked up and stayed there. Whether it was for the country or whatever the excuses that you want to use for doing it, there's no, there's no, there's no common sensual. A person with common sense is never going to think killing someone or breaking into a government building and destroying it and doing crazy stuff like defecating in people's offices and stuff like that. People with that mindset have more issues than just their politic, the way they hear politics. So those are the people that, 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 that it's sad that represents the right side. It's sad to be in the same political view as that life, but I understand how you can get very passionate about this and how you could, how, how wholeheartedly you want to fight for this country and you want, and you want to, do anything possible to show whatever you feel freedom is, and then you think that doing that is a good idea. That means you have something else wrong with your fucking head. But for everyone in the uh, in, in the left side to start pointing fingers at Trump and saying it's his fault, when he didn't say nothing close to what you people are saying he said, it's crazy to me. Oh my God. It's, it's nuts. That means that you guys are just listening to what people like him are saying, which I love Stephen A. Smith and his political views. Don't, I don't give a fuck about none of that. Very entertaining dude, very knowledgeable dude. I, I like the way he explained things. He's very smart at what he does and everything. And just because I don't, how, I don't like his political views doesn't mean I'm going to stop listening to him because his main thing, it, he's not a politician like that. He talks about it. His thing is sports. His thing is that. That's where I pay attention to him because he knows what the fuck he's talking about. And sometimes I don't agree with half the shit he says, but entertaining as shit. Good guy. Good dude. I know where his heart is. But to come on a platform like this and start and start giving false information because your political views are one way and, and, and you're not getting the full fucking picture. Like how can you make a how can you make a debate? How can you make a debate on something that you are passionate obviously about without having the full picture? You're only doing it with just your side. What your side is feeding you, what you're reading on your side, what news channel you watch. You're not a Fox dude, you're a CNN dude probably. And you're going to be watching that. You're going to be listening to everything they say because it's all going to be slander against Trump, anything Trump has to do. When on the right side, the people that I watch, you know what we do, and, and I find that that similarity between the people that I watch, like Charlie Kirk and, and, and Ben Shapiro and Candace Owens, is that they they do their research on both sides of the spectrum, and then they come to and then they put it together and then come to one conclusion of which side is better going to benefit the country more than just certain people, and that's the side they're going to go with. So that's why I will listen to them more because they could give you facts. They could give you numbers. They could give you links. They could give you anything you want to prove what they're saying is factual by the numbers. And people don't like facts. People don't like that factual shit. They want to live in this, in this, in this mentality of 
believe everything the media fucking tells you and just run with it because how can they be lying? Because it's obvious. Because the numbers don't lie. That's why. Because they, the, the facts, the actual paperwork, the prints out, and you can see the actual number doesn't lie. When Trump was president, the, the country was in a better position to flourish and grow bigger than it was in the last three and a half years. And that is a just factual, that's a, that is a Googleable fact that you could just go and do your research and get it out. I don't go in debt and get links and do all this other shit because this is not what this channel is mainly about. It's mainly about music. But these type of conversations need to be had sometimes because I learned from listening to them by looking at both ends, by doing my research not only on the Democratic Party but on the Republican Party as well. And, and, and getting the full picture on both sides on whatever policy is trying to be passed or on the numbers to try to affect it where those numbers is going to lower and it's going to benefit everybody in the country. Those are the numbers that I am worried about and those are the numbers that I pay attention to. So when I hear one side giving me those inf that information and the other side is just, is just all I'm hearing is bashing Trump and making fun of what he's doing over there and the people that he's getting into office and talking all this other stuff instead of giving, why don't you just give me some type of facts? So what I'll do is because I know a lot of people are going to start butt hurting over this fucking video. What I'll do is, when I start doing my videos next week, I'm going to throw in a video there of me reacting to Charlie Kirk. And my, no, Charlie Kirk and Candace Owens. And we're going to put it together. And let's go see the similarities before you start saying anything. Let's see the similarities of how people talk about topics like Donald Trump and everything else. And then let, let's, let's, just, let's just see the difference. Let's, I'm going to finish it off. Oh, no. On that fateful day, January 6th, 2021. So, ladies and gentlemen, all I got to say about this is welcome to the chaos. Welcome to the chaos. All I ask is that you consider this. When the Democrats come and say, see, see, see what you tell, see what we told y'all, tell them to kick rocks. Donald Trump strolled down the golden escalators in 2015, that's what he did. Y'all swore up and down. He was going to lose. You made jokes about him. You laughed at him. Commentators, elected officials, even former President Obama. And then he beat Hillary Clinton in the Electoral College vote. And he lost the election in 2020. But here he is, the Republican nominee, not once, not twice, but three straight elections. And the Democrats still don't have a definitive candidate they believe can beat them. So I don't want to hear what they have to say. Because in the end, you can't beat them. You were willing to rely on an 81-year-old man that was going to be 82 by the time of the election to go up against him because you had no one definitively you could point to that could take him out. Mm -hmm. Fair and square. Now, you can sit up there and debate all, the, all you want until the cows come home about lawfare and all of this stuff. If you're someone on the right and how they use lawfare to get at Donald Trump, that's not to say they were wrong. That's not to say he didn't break any laws. Nobody cares. The American people spoke. Yep. 34 felony convictions. Right. Two impeachments. Civil suits for hundreds of millions. They said, kick rocks. We want him anyway. Yep. And they weren't the only ones. The independents voted for him too. Mm -hmm. Women voted for him. That's a fact. Minorities in the Latino and the black community elevated in numbers. There's nothing anybody could say. Nope. The man won the election fair and square. That's a fact. So this chaos that is threatening to come about even though we don't know for sure whether that not that's going to be the case so now i'm confused i don't know if he's with it or he's not with it 
I don't know if he's. I think he's just saying, "All right, we he got it." <laughs> like you can't fight it. Like half. Like I want to get that shirt that shows the map of how how the difference was because the difference was crazy. It looked like some 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 Resident Evil shit. Do you see the states? It looked like some Resident Evil shit was taking over the planet, the whole country. <laughs> Even though we don't know for sure whether that not that's going to be the case, you brought it on yourself because you couldn't beat them. You didn't get enough people out to the polls to beat them. And he won. But you but you know why? Also, what what helped a lot was people like our Turning Point USA. Charlie Kirk, Candace Owens, going to campuses and going to these people that could vote, these kids, these college students that could vote and and debating them and saying, come here and then let me let me school you with facts. And then there's a lot of people like, oh, you're over here uh, <laughs> fighting, uh, debating college kids. Now, that's not fair. You have a more advantage. Why? Hey, Charlie Kirk never went to college. He barely graduated high school. He never did college. He dropped out of community college, and he started he, he he started teaching himself. He started putting in the work and doing the research and looking at the numbers and and going to the websites and, and going to libraries and getting information. He's the one that put in all this work all these years to create Turning Point USA to help people understand what the fuck is really going on. People just see him as this oh radical Republican. He's not though. He, that he's the the least he's there giving you absolute facts and people go in there from the left side that would like to debate him and, and try to get him and try to get him in a lie or get him in a in bullshit and his response are always the same exact way a fact explaining that fact and explain to the other person why why you're saying is wrong point blank that's how he does his debate there's very few videos that i've seen that somebody got there with a ring. And he's told many people, if you think that I'm I'm bullying these these college kids, then why don't the professors from this college just come in here and debate me? Get somebody that you would think that is being my level of education on this situation, and then I'll be able to debate the, the, the person. Because he'll debate anybody. He doesn't give a fuck. It just so happens that he's giving the platform to the left side so they can have their voice. The reason why those videos are so entertaining is because it shows you exactly how the left side thinks. Because it's kind of crazy that they'll go to every state and every state, they all have the same mentality and just watch one of them and see how their mental works and see if you think that that's right with Charlie's answer or Candace Owens' answer. This is, this is like, oh my God, this is actually happening in front of me. There's people out here that really are talking like this. And there's, there's a lot of times it's even adults, grown-ass people are up there debating him. So it's not only college kids. He's debating grown-ass adults, too. Politicians, all of them. So, I mean, it's just that this is, a, this is a movement that you have to make when you believe something so wholeheartedly that you, that you know it's going to fix the United States. So he believed in this so, so hard. That he created something that we could they could go and travel to every college in every state of the United States to talk to these kids and explain to them about politics because the schools are not teaching them that. They'd rather talk about transgenders and, and, and race and all this other shit than actually teach these kids about this is this is the way it's supposed to be. These are the facts, these are the numbers, this is what this is gonna do, this is what this is gonna do. And be transparent with what they do. Everything that they're saying are transparent. They're giving you the facts. They're giving you the information. The left side, when you see them, they really don't. They know how to talk, but they really don't. So it's kind of confusing to me because I don't know where he's going with. But it seems like more like, all right, the majority got it. So we have to stop bitching about it. We have to stop going crazy and we have to stop being the way we are right now because you guys are making yourselves look crazy. There's really completion videos of people screaming in their cameras because Trump won. That is ridiculous and it's crazy. What is that going to solve? You guys are making yourself look more and more desperate and entitled than ever before with those videos. What Stephen A. Smith is saying, and I respect it, is... Calm the fuck down. Because you guys are not making yourselves look good. Even Biden and, 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 and Kamala 
are, 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 are take them for once in your life. Actually, take them as an example right now. Then they're not going over here acting all crazy. Repeatedly saying that this is going to be a, a very smooth transition. We're going to try to make it as smooth as possible on January 20th. We're going to try to make this transition as smooth as possible. And they're emphasizing on that so like that these people can understand, yo, they won. Obviously, we can't fight those numbers. There's no way you can rig that. There is no way in hell that they can rig that without Trump being that transparent on their fucking agenda. Fuck it. We lost. Move on. I'm pretty sure that Joe Biden is the happiest man right now because he could retire. And he could say, fuck all of you. I'm never falling down a flight of steps again. He's going to get a house in a beach where there's no stairs. And he's going to chill and, and, and enjoy his golden years. This is the moment right now he should be golfing. He should be chilling. He, should be, he shouldn't be dealing with any of this bullshit. Kamala, go back to doing what you were doing. Do whatever you want. You're free. Go and do what you, you're passionate about. Do what you love about. They're saying it. That, look, we lost. It's cool. We cool. Let's go. But how can you come at your constituents that are out there that look up to you and spend the last couple of years aggressively, aggressively coming at this man And then now that they're losing their minds, you guys are just doing this and walking away from it. I don't know if they've gotten on a interview or or talked to anybody or made a press conference talking about we need to calm the fuck down. I know their 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 final speeches, they did that, but that was not more of, you know, we need to. No, actually, no bullshit. I did hear that they did say that. They did say it. They did say it right when they were giving their their final their final speech in the White House. They said the shit. Y'all niggas need to chill. This is gonna try to make this as smooth as possible. Day one, we're just gonna have to just let's let's pray to who you pray with and just let let's let's get it together and let's keep on going and let's just you know the 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 our system is intact, and if they say that that's what it is, that's what it is, and we can't fight that. We have to go with what it is. They did say it, and these people are still going crazy, and that's the fucking problem. You can't create monsters and then and then try to calm them down when shit hit the fan. You you promised these people something. You these people were were you made it to the point where they were like, we can't live without them being in in office. That's how they made it in these in these some of these people's heads. And now that you lost, they now they're in shambles. They don't know what to do now. But get on camera and scream. Come on, we better than that, man. We 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 gotta, gotta stop getting so personal about that. We didn't fuck go fucking bitch and complain. Then anything like like that. I mean, we did with January six. So I guess screaming is better. <laughs> if you really think about it, if you really think about it, I guess just screaming on camera, I guess that's better than but there are people that are hurting themselves and and that no, that's not that's not fucking cool. That's not that, let's just just breathe. It's going to be fine. You're going to be okay. Just take it easy. It's fine. Breathe. The ones that want to move to Canada, good luck. There's Canadians right now that said that they they selling their passports and they want to swap. Y'all can swap. There there no problem. They'll come over here. So I mean, you guys can make that trade. Um, just relax. How how does that sound? Like you want to fight for this country and you love this country. You want this country to be great, but when shit hits the fan, you want to leave the country. That kind of it's a little bit nuts to me. If you think about it, you want to leave because your candidate didn't win. That's nuts. I'm going to stay. I'll, I'll stay here. I'm good. I'm good. I know what it is in other countries. I've been to other countries and I, I know how they live. And no, I'm good. I'm, uh, I'm good. Believe me. Are you going to be put your trust in me? Put your trust in me. Uh, believe me. And get enough people nope. out to the polls to beat them. And he won fair and square. Let's get to your tweets before I get on out of here, please.
because I want to I want to see what you guys got to say. All right, All right, I'm done. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to see none of the rest of that stuff. That's good. Miss Nancy, we did an hour thirty nine. I think this is my longest video that I. No, I did a two hour video once. We close though. We got close. I love you guys. I, this is not even a reaction. This is just a vibe talk right now. A vibe talk. I'm gonna call it set and fly. I love you guys. I got more coming. It's what is it? Six twenty seven. Good. I'm doing good time. So I got. Let's do three more. We'll do three more, and then I'm out of here. I love you guys. Peace.